Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be doing a full analysis of a Divine 5 carry lifestealer. So if you're a carry player yourself, this video should help you a lot in getting to the next rank. And now without further ado, this was a paid analysis from my boy Peter, who I'll also be coaching. And uh, yeah, let's kind of get into it. So what he said is that in this match, I kind of griefed my landing stage by leveling Rage at the Banner Rune fight, which I certainly agree with. I think you should rarely ever do this. The Rune, while it does give 200 gold to your team total, uh, just isn't really worth it if you're going to grief the first few waves because, well, if you get denied or you get chipped down and you eventually die due to the fact that you have the wrong spell, that's going to feed way more than 200 gold. And that's kind of how I see it. And yeah, so you're struggling through the early game. I remember focusing on hitting creeps, moving towards open space, and thinking about our win conditions. I also muted the person being super annoying over Mike. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're trying to win, guys, and you're genuinely trying to gain rank, I highly recommend you mute the annoying people. Personally, I play with chat off. I just don't feel like the majority of what is said in rank matchmaking is useful if you're trying to win the game. If you're trying to get annoyed and be emotional, yeah, maybe it's quite good to keep chat on, but I don't know. I think most of the time people are not being very useful in, in the way in which they chat, but okay. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So in terms of starting items, everything looks pretty okay here. Nothing too crazy in the early waves, just gonna wait for the, the Elder Titan to walk forward, hit him. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously where you would prefer to have point in one of your other abilities, but it's fine. So it's fine to bring the wave under tower here because you don't actually want necessarily like a double wave, really good creep aggro there. Uh, that creep aggro will make it easier to last the under tower and make it harder for them to pressure the last hit. So, okay, really great, right? Right off the bat, the aggro being super, super key here to secure these CS. So good stuff. Okay, nice. Good last hit there. Yeah, I mean, immediately, I don't know how much I'd want to trade with a level two Elder Titan. At least he doesn't have a spirit. But yeah, the rage makes this pretty hard because you don't really do anything with rage early on. So... Yeah, probably not worth it. From there, I think you will need a second set of tangos in this lane. Maybe you can get away with not doing that, but I think it's probably stupid. So yeah, I would likely buy a second set of tangos. So then the next thing I'd add is I don't think Life Sealer is very good early on. Uh, this hero just doesn't trade very well, which might seem surprising because you like Life Steal, but the problem is it's only like 1% max health Life Steal, which just isn't that good. Like, it's just not. Every time you get hit, it kind of completely nullifies it. So if you're getting hit by two heroes, it's just not good. And like. Here, this is just not a good trade. You're out of regen. These guys have uh, a good amount of regen left and you're going to kind of just run in between them, right? Like you don't want to run in between people early on as life sealer. It's not going to go well. Like as long as this Rubik continues to hit him. I mean, I don't know. I feel like, okay, this guy has spirit in one. I guess maybe you went in when he didn't have spirit. Oh boy, overextension on the willow, uh, which, which makes it more reasonable. But yeah, the main thing I would always recommend focusing on, guys, if you're a safe lane player, is keeping the lane back. Now, unfortunately, the side camp being pulled one minute in does just suck, and there's not much you can do about it. Like, it's kind of your support's job at the end of the day, so that is what it is. But then immediately from there, I would avoid taking any right click damage. Like, I don't want to take these trades. Um, yeah, I mean, your Willow's full HP, so she can kind of trade. But for the most part, I would pull creep aggro on these three melee creeps onto this range creep, because the range creep will always do the most damage. So if you're trying to pull the lane back, right? Because the enemy has pulled the lane back to themselves, right? So now the goal needs to be to pull the lane back towards your tower. In order to do that, you wanna kill the range creeps. That is the main way in which you'll accomplish this. So I would pull aggro off the Rubik here onto the range creep. I would not get stuck here because not only is this not getting the range creep killed, but it's also getting you hit by the Rubik. So this is like very bad positioning to be blocked, right? Because you wanna kill the range and get the lane back. You don't wanna take these unnecessary autos. Right. Great uh, Bramble by the Willow, which kind of clutched this up a little bit and it, it went better than I expected. But still, right, uh, like the, this trade is not good. Obviously, the Willow kind of overextended. You should not be trading with an Elder Titan that has his W active. I mean, it is certainly not worth feeding. The wave is going to push in. You could have just chilled, right? You would have had like 400 health. Willow's respawning. Drop a salve. Heal up to max HP. This is not worth feeding this guy a double kill especially when the wave is going to shove in, right? You'll, you'll get creeps, so you should be okay. And yeah, at this point, I mean, you end up taking a lot of damage from the ET here, and it's just about knowing your timings. I mean, first things first, once again, Life Stealer does not trade that well at this point. Like, I, people seem to think this, but it's just not the case, right? Like, you have to close the gap to even start getting your damage off, and then even then, 
it's just not that effective. Yeah, if the guy's completely alone, or if it's like a weaker laner, maybe like a Brewmaster, you can maybe try to get away with it. But running through an entire creep wave to hit a Rubik is not an option, right? He tanks two to three autos from the Rubik. Rubik's doing a great job of hitting him a bunch here. This is definitely, you can tell it's divine slash immortal because the Rubik's very proficient in like getting hits off. But then, yeah, I mean, I don't know where you're going, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of goofy, but yeah, I mean, level three Elder Titan is this guy's timing. Elder Titan's a very simple hero. If he has his W active, especially when he's level three, you cannot trade, right? It's as simple as that. You cannot trade once this guy is level three uh, and his spirit is active. He gets way too much armor and way too much damage. So I would focus on pulling aggro and avoiding this guy anytime his spirit is either unused or on cooldown, right? Maybe you can hit him occasionally when he's going for last hit, but that's it, right? Like for instance here, you should pull aggro. There's no real reason in trading with Rubik. Once again, it's just not efficient. I think people just think that life stealer mans up. A lot of people hold this idea and it's just not the case. Like very frequently I've leaned against life stealers and they play like this even at the, you know, 9 to 10k MMR bracket and it's very punishable. Very, very punishable. Oh my God, this ET is destroying you guys. And now once again, just to be very technical, you can see the trades against ET when he has no spirit is like fine. It's even. But then once he pulls the spirit back, it's not even remotely close, right? Like he, you turn here because he's running away, but it's not really a great trade. Right. Uh, yeah, it's not a great trade. You get quite bodied. See, at this point, the laning stage is going to be somewhat of a wash. But basically, to summarize the main things uh, you need to fix, Peter, if, if I would suggest anything, is number one, keep the lane back. Like, yes, obviously, the side pull griefed. But from there, it's your job to pull aggro onto the range creep. Just focus on denies. Don't just randomly auto attack people. You're auto attacking people way too much, which does a couple of things. It pushes the wave because you're running through the creeps and tanking the creeps. And when you tank the creeps, the creeps aren't hitting your creeps and then your creeps stay alive. And that means your creeps are pushing in the wave into them. And you're just tanking way too much damage early on. I'd wait for my timing, whether or not that's uh, my phase boots, my treads, whatever I'm buying that game, I guess usually phase boots on, on Lifestealer. I would focus on, on hitting that timing, uh, hitting my level. Usually I would say level three, level four is a good time to start training. And then I would look to see when they waste certain spells, right? If it's Elder Titan, it's his W. If you if he uses it and then it's on cooldown, that's when you go on the guy. But you have to you have to understand this. If you don't, you will lose trades and you will lose the fight. So thankfully, you're able to heal off the cart there and things kind of even out now. Uh, you do a decent job of recovering here. You're only 500 behind the ET, which is not that bad. But this is a lane I would say you could win if you play optimally. And yeah, if you're defending the tower, you want to pull the wave behind and then kind of chill. Like even here, both these guys are level six and. I don't know, you just seem to think that Life Stealer is unkillable, and it's just not the case, right? Like, a lot of, once again, I know I'm kind of repeating myself on this, but it's just not the case. Like, you do not want to take this much damage on this hero. Hopefully, you get to infest before they dive you, but at this point, you're at such an uncomfortable HP range where, yeah, you're just going to have to jungle. Where if you played a bit more defensive, maybe, I mean, honestly, at this point, I think jungling is just correct. If three level six heroes are sitting in your lane, oh, that's a free kill. Oh, okay, honestly, I like the infest attempt there. That was kind of based. Unfortunately, you might die because of it. Ugh, okay, I, I honestly don't mind that. That was a wall time global. Unfortunately, I guess I would have to say that you have to respect the global a bit here, but that was a based global. He baited you guys in super hard. I honestly like the infest attempt. That infest would have fully healed you and it would have made the willow unkillable. So that idea was actually very, very good and definitely a high MMR play. All right, from there you walk top, but okay, one thing I'd like to say, just what I'd recommend you do to be very straightforward, <laughs> It's just let them take the tower. Like, just let these guys take the tower. If they take the tower, you will free farm. And that's how it works. But honestly, if you're under farmed and you're under leveled, you can't play to defend the tower. Now, I don't want to make this a general rule of thumb because Life Stealer, especially if the lane is going well, should sit in his lane as long as humanly possible. This is definitely a hero that can dead lane. Uh, however, if it has a bad start, obviously you can't really do that. Right? You can't just dead lane no matter what. It has to be based on the game, as a lot of things are. And so, yeah, in this game, once these three or four heroes show up, I would kind of just try to give up the tower. This, honestly, this clip is fine because you had infest and you thought maybe you could save this guy and then turn after you heal. And I actually like the idea. But like the first one where you take two thirds of your health, I would just let them hit it. Honestly, I, I would continue to hit these defensive neutrals kind of keep my gold up, work towards that arm leg, get my phase boots, whatever it is. Also like f fighting with these items is a bit sus. Like if you want to fight, you should have phase boots. It's the fighting item on Lifestealer so you don't get kited. But yeah, from there you're going to walk top, which is fine. I mean, your pudge went bottom, so coming top is okay. 
I actually don't know if this hero can farm Ancients, because you don't really want to be top unless you can farm Ancients. Uh, it's not terrible, obviously. Maybe you can get access to the large camp, as, once again, just getting a little too aggressive. It's not really how this hero plays when you're behind, and I, I think this is going to be a big thing that will allow you to get to the next level, Peter, which is kind of just being a bit more chill when you're having a tough game. I mean, a big part of it is also just understanding your timings. Um, in this clip, it's like, what is the real value of running a Huerta? You're never going to kill her, right? You're not going to solo kill her. You might be like, oh, I'm, I'm playing to chip her down, right? But the downside of like people being here is that you're going to have to now use Infest defensively. Thankfully, Infest is a really low cooldown nowadays. It used to be like 100. Now it's only 80, which is pretty nice. Uh, but you will have to just use Infest to heal most likely or, oh my gosh, the Rubik's cooking. Okay, you should have Infested. Uh, you probably obviously would have lived in that case. All right, so at this point, you make another one of these aggressive plays, which I, I mean, you end up baiting them in and kind of killing them here. Uh, the only thing I'd say is like, maybe you could have clicked Rage early. This guy's really chatted with his globals. He's like super chatted with the globals. And fortunately, the Rubik didn't get his lift off. Otherwise, maybe he would have died. Uh, but okay, solid uh, infest here. Honestly, I think it's good. Kind of helps Pudge close the gap here, as I believe it gives movement speed. Pretty certain. So it helps Pudge close the gap. Really nice. Good stuff. You're going to farm up the wave. And this ends up super working out for you because you're able to now pressure in the tower. Get the tower that's huge for your game push in the next wave exactly that's what i do now at this point i would probably just farm some of the nearby camps i mean yeah you're not really looking to connect mid good you hit the disarm creep first that's what you should do at this point you're looking for lane creep so like i would probably tp bottom on the double wave here um most of the time you don't want to tp unless you have to but on a double wave as life stealer i would try to do it because the hero needs lane creeps to snowball it's very bad at killing neutrals it's pretty efficient to hit ancients when you have uh, like a good amount of points and feast but until then honestly you need lane creeps and so if i see that the wave is doubling up and the reason why i would know that i'm going to get about seven to eight creeps here is because of the timer right it, and this is something that like only the best carries do but it's something you guys can implement which is if you look at the clock or like look at the wave either is fine like the reason why i look at the clock is like i know the creep waves usually meet around 55 or like 53 or whatever you can do that or you can say okay my wave is pushing in this does not meet with this, right? These are not the same wave. So you're going to have a double wave. And so getting eight creeps in a row is huge. Eight lane creeps is massive because these small shitters like this camps takes forever to farm and just doesn't give nearly as much gold. Obviously, it's not like super inefficient, this camp. I mean, hitting neutrals like this, it's not super inefficient, but compared to getting a double wave of lane creeps, it's definitely inefficient. Yeah, from there, you're going to push in top. This was actually really good. So this sequence, I want to go back and highlight it. This was good. So... The Wind Ranger comes top, who you certainly do not contest. You have a horrible matchup against that hero. It's one of Life Stealer's uh, worst matchups. And so you're going to back off, stack the Ancients. And okay, unfortunately, it didn't go through, but it's a right idea. And you're going to farm up the Ancients. And that's perfect, right? If someone comes to your lane that you don't contest, let them push in the wave to you and farm up the camps behind you, right? Obviously, I would be honestly pushing this wave. I guess you probably don't get. Yeah, no way you get solo killed by Wind. You could always get infest off. So that's fine. You can always get in Fest off. She probably can't burst you. Pushing in top here is correct. I would be looking mid. Do you have a tier one tower? Okay, so I would consider TPing because at this point you're pretty strong and Infest is extremely useful. Let's actually see. So I wouldn't TP here. It's too deep under the tower. Like if I'm looking, this Pudge is probably dead. I mean, it's close. If you were going to TP, it would be here. But honestly, I think because of the fact, like if the fight is here, he should TP. Because it's here and it's off to the side, there's a chance by the time he shows up, he gets nothing out of it. And then it's just bad, right? Because you'd rather be hitting creeps. And so I would say this decision was correct due to the location of the fight. He gets a lot of value out of this, a lot of lane creeps, right? Able to push this in. Yeah, I wouldn't really hit the tower. I don't think it's worth it at this point. Farm back to the ancients. Oh, hitting left ancients? Yeah, I guess that actually makes sense. Hitting left ancients first into right ancients. Okay, you can farm up the stack, which, you know, hurts a little bit. But that's fine. You can do it eventually. Oh, you stacked it as well. Beautiful. Great efficiency here. So this this is wonderful. This So I would say his back half of the game is the reason why he's divine. Like, this was really clean. The farming rotations were clean. Like, avoiding the wind was good. I would say not TPing mid in that case was good. So everything here was solid. Oh, Maelstrom. Uh, is this a Maelstrom game? What's the other build? Radiance and Deso? I would probably go... I don't actually hate Mjolnir. I actually think Mjolnir is very good on this hero. And I'm personally a fan of this build. So I, I don't know, maybe... Oh, I don't like this in Fest play. This makes no sense. I'll talk about why. Maybe it works anyway, but I don't like it. I don't actually mind the Mjolnir because the attack speed really does allow you to hit people extremely hard. Uh, something as well I'll say is using the shield on yourself when you run in is extremely useful. You can also put it on the Pudge. 
And then something like Windranger, who does a high in, uh, amount of instances of damage, will proc the Mjolnir shield very frequently, and it will do an obscene amount of damage. I personally think that that item is a very underrated in Dota right now. Very, very strong item. The reason why I don't like this in Fest is what are you really looking at? So in high MMR, guys, and, and in pro games, the main way they look for kills is they push in the wave, and then when the wave is close to the enemy side, they go for the kill there. The enemy will feel comfortable clearing it because it's close to their tower. That, or they will look for uh, people on wards, right? Uh, and often it's going to be with a smoke, even then. Uh, and so this play, it's like, is someone on the enemy team really going to farm the wave when it's this close to your tower, right? And you have no vision, so it's like you just have to pray to God they're here. I'm not a fan of this play. Even if you get a kill, uh, that kill, I mean, you have to pray you find Muerta, basically. Because if you don't, it's basically... Okay, oh, you find win. God bless. <laughs> god bless but you guys see what i'm saying like it almost felt like luck and you could be like oh but it's good to take the risk yes it's good to take the risk sometimes but if you push in the wave and then do that you'll get the gold and it will be more likely you find the guy at the tower anyway because here's another thing if the wind sees that the pudge and the life slayer are not showing anywhere like the support dark willow is clearing the wave she should assume that these guys are looking for something Right? And that's what high more players do. They basically assume, okay, if I don't see anything, they're probably smoked. Or, or I guess in this case, not smoked, just like looking for a kill. Uh, also, thank God they didn't have a ward in this area because, yeah, you guys weren't smoked. But, all right, pushing in top here, yeah. I would be looking bottom. So, I mean, okay, I, I can tell you're not looking bottom. And this is a problem, right? You're, you're at the point where your hero is definitely strong. You definitely want to look to show up and help out the fights. Like, you need to see this happen in TP, right? This is a good TP. It's three heroes, your Pudge is committing, it's under a tower, you have to TP here, right? This is the difference, it's under the tower, it's in a good location, I would 100% TP in. Now your team kills them all anyway, which is great, but that's not how you should see Dota, right? Dota is a game of numbers, right? You always want to bring uh, a, a, as many numbers as possible to the fight. Obviously, yes, um, if your team is going to completely wipe them and not die in any hero, then what he's doing is correct, which is like crazy, that his team just completely wipes them. But you never want to take this chance, right? These fights are always going to be the biggest swings of gold. And so unless you're playing like Naga Siren and it's not your timing, right? Or you're playing Alchemist and you're not at your timing, then maybe you don't show up, right? But on Lifestealer, it's like, okay, you know, I mean, you're Armlet Maelstrom. You buy two pretty cheap items and you're strong at this point in the game. So that was definitely a fight I would want, my, uh, want to TP into. Thankfully, it ends up working out anyway, but you can imagine in a lot of games, the lack of life stealer, uh, right, would would kill you there. So that's what you got to be careful about. So at this point, I wouldn't really look to hit the tower. This kind of seems like a play I would make if, okay, this whole sequence kind of just makes no sense. So basically at this point of the game, what you're looking to do is connect to these types of fights. And then like, if you want to connect to other fights, you want to be smoked for the most part, right? Otherwise, I would just continue to hit ancients and then look to TP into stuff. Right, I, I wouldn't just like run across mid when the void spirit's gonna kill the wave because now you know you're running mid, there's no wave mid, right? I mean, okay, you take this guy's creeps, right? You come into their triangle, which isn't that bad. And honestly, there is a lot of logic to coming into the triangle here. Honestly, farming the enemy uh, jungle, the ancient creeps here allows you to be close to your team and uh, farm at the same time. So Honestly, I don't hate this in hindsight. I think this is actually okay if that was in your, your intent, like where you want to farm and be close to your team. I actually don't mind that. I, I don't. I think on greedier carries, you should just continue to farm out top. Like part of the problem with what you're doing is like now no one's pushing out top. And so that way uh, the tier one top will get threatened eventually and someone on your team will feel pressure to defend it. But I don't actually mind you connecting here. I think it's okay. Hitting this tower though is insane. What you want to do at this point is just farm all the camps nearby. You never want to hit, hit a tower like this. Why? Void Spirit's not close enough. Shaman's not close enough. It's it's the best fight location for the enemy. Life Sealer is not really a siege hero, which might sound crazy because it's like, oh, he can heal with Infest and he can click Rage. You don't want to get your Infest forced early, right? You want to have it for the team fight. You, you want to use it in two ways. You want to use it to reset mid team fight and heal and then go back in. Or you want to use it with someone who has like a blink dagger and burst, right? Like maybe like this, right? But now it's like, okay, I would have wanted to farm this Ancients, this Ancients, this Ancients, and then once we have that farmed, there's 30 seconds before there's any other camps to farm that are uh, aggressive because you guys are winning the game, you want to stay up on the map, that's fine. 
but there's no more camps to farm, boom, we go for our smoke. And so, yeah, I mean, you're going to get the kill anyway, but you don't farm an entire uh, ancient rotation. Your shaman is still not here as, okay, I mean, fine. You hit an infest bomb. I'm honestly not a huge fan of infest bombs in a lot of cases because it means that you don't have a uh, defensive infest, which actually really sucks. Uh, defensive infest is very, very strong. But, oh, you went back for Manta. I mean, I see why it's a good Manta game. I definitely like Manta this game, and I would say going Mjolnir Manta is good. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I like the Manta, but I, I feel like if you go Maelstrom first, I don't know. I'm, it's actually tough. Maybe this build's fine. Yeah, I'm going to say it's fine. I, I like having the Dispel against Silencer. It's very hard to play uh, Lifestealer without without um, a Dispel. It, it is quite difficult in a lot of cases. That is okay. Another Infest Bomb. I mean, at this point, yeah, you're, it's just not... I mean, you want to play active. Like, when your team is winning like this, and they're playing aggressive, and you're playing something like Lifestealer who can, who can play high tempo, right? You don't really have major cooldowns. Infest is like a 65 second cooldown at this point. It's very short. Like, I would definitely connect to this fight, so I like that. Okay, you look for a play with the Pudge. It's fine, it misses. That's fine. I'm okay with this. Okay, taking the, the tier two top, fight continues on. Yeah, I mean, it it's kind of a lot of time sitting in this Pudge. Like, <laughs> I, 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 you, I mean, at this point, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's just inefficient. Like, it's hard for me to exactly say because what feels bad about Infest Bombing is that if it doesn't go well and you get out, Infest is on cooldown and it's the full cooldown. So you can't just like sit inside of them and then have it back up when you get out. That would be pretty dope. But you can't do that, right? Like, right when he gets out, it goes on the max cooldown. But this feels a little bit sus to me. Like, I'm glad you guys are putting pressure. I think, like, playing fast and going for these kills, like, making these moves is kind of good. Okay, you smoke and go bottom? Like, no, nah, yeah. So, this is not how you address the waves, right? Lifestealer is not a hero that can afford to do this because he's too slow. And you don't, wanna, you don't want to run to the most defensive wave in the game. Like, there are certain heroes that do this. Right? There are certain heroes that do this. For instance, Naga Siren, what she would do is like run to here, send illusions down, and then like run back to her team. Because you got, once again, you guys are playing aggressive. You want to be you want to be ready to join. And so what I would do if I want to farm aggressively is maybe I'd go take their ancients. Right? Uh, let me go back a little bit. Okay, you take the tier two mid. That's fine. Now you go farm their ancients if they're up. But like I would not run bottom. Maybe their ancients are already dead to Muerta, which is fine. Yeah, so this is dead already, but whatever. Just like wait for it to respawn. Or farm these camps. The only way you want to go bottom is if your team agrees to all come bottom and like play for Roche. Realistically, the best play in this game is to tell your team to chill, get Aegis, and then end the game with an Aegis. And so if you're really trying to shot call, you should start spam pinging Roche and then walk bottom. Don't TP bottom because if the enemy team sees you TP bottom, they should try to kill your team top because they should know you're not there, right? So you don't want to TP bottom. That wouldn't be good. But you want to you want to come bottom like so this play is like theoretically good, right? Like conceptually good is maybe the way to put it. You need your team to come so you can Roche though, right? Because Roaching is definitely your guys' best play at this point. You're winning the game. You have a Shaman, so you should click Serpent Wards on the Roche bit. Oh, you find that. But yeah, like hitting these camps when you're winning the game is not very good because you're not, you're not necessarily putting as much pressure as possible. This is honestly, I was going to say it's dangerous because you could die. Like if they smoked here, Wind Ranger plus Marta maybe kills you. With Pudge in the area, you probably live if he hooks you out. So there, you've got that going for you. But yeah, I mean, I would just, I would be very, very aggressive on calling Roche. Because you can't end the game. Like, yeah, at this point, okay, I mean, this is probably a decent jump. Oh no, Pudge didn't want to go. Okay, honestly, I kind of respect it. But yeah, at this point, you need the Aegis if you want to, like, advance forward and, and be Giga Chad, right? Hitting these defensive neutrals isn't really going to extend the lead that you guys currently have. Like, you're definitely winning the game and you're strong. And so, yeah, hitting, unless you're going to play three lanes and just strictly play for farm on everyone on your team, um, it's going to be, okay, yeah, nice. You guys, you guys take Roche top. Where did you TP? You didn't take the Aegis? What? Void Spirit took the Aegis? I mean, no, nah, there's no way. I think at this point you guys want to try to, I mean, Sieging's hard. The enemy team's high ground defense is really good. It's really good. But yeah, showing mid here is definitely insane. Like, you can't, you cannot TP mid against uh wind ranger like this i mean it's just insane right like if you didn't i mean there's no way you know they're taking tormentor you guys do not have vision of this and so if they're mid you're dead uh shackle into life definitely kills them and so or like shackle into muerta definitely kills them so you can't just like go mid like this as life stealer against heroes that kill you i would want to be a lot more careful and at this point once again i want to connect with my team so your team has aegis you want to play fast you can't just farm the furthest camps away from your team so it's not that you can't hit Ancients, like hitting Ancients here is okay, but then once your team 
starts moving to the right, I would want to kill mid wave and then kill the next mid wave if possible. So obviously you don't feel safe doing it. That's fine. But then I would want to get my team to connect and move down and, and play together, right? Like that is why sometimes honestly playing heroes like Spectre is a lot easier than something like Lifestealer. Because if you're Spectre, you just hit this camp, 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 this camp. This camp. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just hit whatever camp you want. But that's not an option as Lifestealer because you have to be in position uh, if your team does something. And so like hitting the furthest camp away from your team is kind of insane because now if a fight happens bottom, there's a chance they just feed because you're not there, right? And so like taking these lotuses is kind of weird and like hitting these camp. I mean, your whole team is bottom and you're not even remotely in the area. Like, yes, there's a point to hit Ancients in Dota. If the game is even, you can defensively hit Ancients. If it's the early game and you're hitting your timings, you should defensively hit Ancients. Once you're kind of ready to go, you can hit like once again, if the game is even, you can hit Ancients. But you guys are winning and you have Aegis. Uh-oh. Okay, nice and Are you going to live? Oh my god. Nice reaction. All right. This is not a good play to be bon- I mean, you're, the way you execute on living here is insanely good. But this is not a good play. And it's what I've been saying, right? Like, I could have seen this coming. I, like, in high MMR and 10k MMR, maybe you die the first time. And you die the second time. And you die the third time. You do this type of thing. But maybe at, at 5k, you only die 30% of the time. Because it is a very advanced play for them to set up with the right heroes to kill you. Like, but they do bring the wind. I mean, you're way tankier than I thought. Uh, I don't know if they executed it wrong. I guess the Muerta didn't, pl she didn't place her W in a very good position because she could have, like, Muerta's pretty good against Manta because sometimes you click Manta and you get re-silenced anyway. So, fortune I think fortunately for you, Muerta literally didn't, I don't know, is the W on you? I think it missed. Whatever, it's besides the point. Main thing is that, yeah, clicking Rage and then Infest here is very good. Uh, just to make sure you can get your stuff off. Manta first was perfect to disjoint some of the Muerta auto attacks. And then, oh, instantly getting out here is not good. Uh, are you actually going to live? Why does she do no damage? You have to know that you can't really go on wind. I mean, you can only go on wind if you're certain that wind run is on cooldown. You, Because she has Ags. I mean, I don't even want to get into talking about items right now. But if you, I mean, you have to be clicking items, which you haven't done this game. That's like, honestly, I have a hard time doing that. It's like so much to focus on and to think about. It's like a complete pain in the ass, and I wouldn't recommend focusing on it where you currently are, so I actually kind of scratch that. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if you know she has Ags, and, like, it's going to be hard to kill her. Even without Ags, she has a win run. Like, it's just not a good target unless you're certain it's, like, it's about to end. Then maybe you can try to turn and go on her, but, yeah. Otherwise, not great. So, okay, you kind of bait them on the mid wave. I don't think it was a good play because, let's be real, if this wind has, like, one of the damage items, you probably are dead, like the Maelstrom or the... MKB, or even just like one of the universal builds that kind of hits a bit harder. So, but whatever. Okay. Yeah, this Aegis is sort of getting wasted, right? Like, and the main way you could use it is by clicking Rage and hitting the high ground, right? Uh, it is a little bit risky, but I think you guys can kind of take that risk at this point because you can drop Serpent Wards, you can hunt for hooks. You have great ways of going high ground. Okay, you queue up MKB next, which I don't hate. I think the MKB is all right. I would be a little concerned about you being too squishy. Honestly, I think I'd buy BKB this game. Yeah, I think it's a BKB game. Because they have, like, so much magic damage, and this wind isn't really a threat. I don't think this ET is really going to threaten you yet. I guess maybe he will. Maybe you need some armor, actually. You might just die to physical to this ET. But the reason why BKB is so good is uh, it stops natural order from going through. And then the enemy, like, for instance, it blocks Pierce the Veil. Uh, it, you know, prevents wind from, like, doing anything to you. And you might be like, oh, but I have rage. But the problem with rage, guys, and the reason why you'll see pros buy late BKB on Life Healer is the uptime on rage is shit like to be honest it's not good uh the bkb basically allows you to bridge the gap from the first rage to, to the second rage so it essentially gives you a, a, like a ton of magic immunity and it's really not a bad damage item in general i mean bkb is incredibly good for getting your hits off so uh yeah i, I would say i would say i would probably go bkb at this point just due to the nature of your matchups i think they're like so much kite and so much magic damage i don't hate the mkb if, if your guys the sole goal is to like jump the wind and kill her with Void Spirit and Fest Bomb or Pudge and Fest Bomb is, uh, -oh, you get gone on here. The Mjolnir gives you some ability to hit through evasion, but it's not too much as, uh, this fight looks terrible. Okay, you guys end up going down. Let's actually see how this plays out. See, I mean, looks like the problem here is that they probably had a ward. If I had a guess. Yeah, you guys are just sitting on a ward. And you have to know if the enemy is sitting in their base. The, like, if your ward is top, 
you can't just sit in there. Yeah, I mean, this is just terrible, to be honest. Like, now that I'm really paying attention to it, it's just bad, right? Your vision is top. You don't have Aegis anymore, and they've been sitting in their base. It's obscenely likely that they have a ward here, right? Because you don't have any sentries, and you have no wards in this area. You cannot feel comfortable here. This is just bad map awareness and bad understanding of, like, potential enemy vision, if that makes sense. And this is where the BKB would come into play. Um, not to say that he would have it completed at this point, but, you know, if he was to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the big thing here is division. You cannot sit in the enemy triangle when your wards are top. It's just not an option. All right, so at this point, you guys get a second Aegis, which I hope you take. Why do you guys not give you Aegis? How are you going to end the game? I don't understand. <laughs> Unless your goal is to just YOLO dive the base, which honestly is not a horrible idea. Like, I will say there is slight logic to giving this guy Aegis. If you're going to click smoke, run up the high ground, and try to all-in fight them. Which I don't hate. If you think the enemy team has this obscene high ground defense and even live stealer can't go high ground, then it's fine. Once again, showing on midwave here is very not safe. Like th this is like super not safe. You need to be a lot more careful. And yeah, hitting ancients like this when you guys have ages. Okay, Pudge died. You guys need to group up and make a freaking move to the high ground with the ages. Basically to be straightforward, Peter, like you gotta make, once your team hits this timing, oh, Shaman's on the rat. Once your team hits the Aegis timing, like try to farm towards your team. That's gonna completely amplify your gameplay because your team's getting picked off. And it's not completely your fault. Like I'm not even, it's not your fault that they're dying much at all. Uh, eh, yeah, it's like it's like half and half, right? Because you're, you're arguably your team's strongest hero. So you need to be with them. And then on top of that, I mean, they are just dying and that, that's not completely on you, but you should be looking for fights. You guys are on your timing. You're like 10K ahead or something like that, right? You have Aegis, just group up. And it's largely the job of the carry to kind of rally the troops because people will often go behind you. Say, give me the damn Aegis and let me run down the damn lane or click a smoke, right? Click a smoke and go behind some damn sermon wards. Like you have a shaman, you have a shaman. Just let the guy plant the wards on the high ground and sit behind it and have Pudge fish for hooks and have Void Spirit fish for a jump. Don't infest bomb because that makes it hard to go high ground. The infest will let you uh, heal and, and just siege. Now your team literally loses the game, I think. You guys lose here, right? After Pudge dies? No way you fight with no buyback. I guess Void Spirit will respawn in time. You're probably fine. Oh, you go in. That is chad. Does this work? This is like 1v5. I mean, this is insane. You're, you just wait for Void Spirit. Because to be honest, I feel like Rubik should have like some defensive item. How do you even kill Rubik? He has Ghost and Glimmer and Ogre Seal. How do you kill this guy? How do you kill this guy? He has four ways of not dying. Wait, what? How does this guy die too? Okay, Rubik could have forced after that guy. How does he die? Got you? What? How did they? How do you? Even, I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm like, how did he even just kill Elder Titan? They have two four steps. How did no one click their four step? This guy has a Ghost and a Force and an Ogre Seal. Oh my god, he dies to Mjolnir. Oh my god, dude, what? <laughs> Good thing he used the Mjolnir shield. This shit is OP. It does so much damage. Oh my god, the cheese. <laughs> oh my god, they actually all died to you. Uh, are you gonna die? Oh, the infest. I'll go back to your perspective. No way the Morta gets away. Ah, oh, that's so sad. Oh my god, you actually killed them all. <laughs> I would love to give you full praise. Okay, I'm your coach, right? At the end of the day, I want to see you get good. That was not a good play. I, I hate to be that guy. It was not a good play. If they clicked a singular four staff on anyone or a ghost or ogre seal, you would not have killed anyone and you would have probably died. I don't know. I mean, the way you execute your buttons and fights is very good. If there's one thing I'll give you credit for, you're good at clicking your man, click your rage at the right time. You clicked it like not too early, but not too late. You used your Mjolnir shield. You used the open wounds. Uh, you used and you didn't panic on the infest. Everything was really good in terms of execution. So in, in terms of you being high MMR, I think the most impressive part about you as a player is your team fight execution is very good. It's, it's probably at more of like a 6k level, right? But uh, like... The way in which you farm, you don't connect to your team enough. The laning stage was kind of atrocious, to be honest. I mean, I think you just didn't uh, understand the Elder Titan a bit, which is fine. Like, who the hell plays Elder Titan and who plays him off lane? You know what I mean? So, like, it is what it is. But it, most matchups, Life Stealer doesn't even trade well early on. So, like, whether or not you're against Mag or Slaughter or Lone Druid or Centaur, it, really, almost none of these matchups you trade favorably in, early on. Nice hook out. Okay. Why is your team never together? Like... Literally, guys, if you want to win ranked games, you just need to get people to group up at some point. Like, 
it's just crazy how the, you guys are never together. Like, you just need to place Serpent Wards together on a hill, back up. Like, the game is over if they place double Serpent Wards on the hill, wait for the next double Serpent Wards, and then do it again. They would, they could win the game. Like, they just need to have patience. This team fight looks pretty good, though. You guys will probably kill them all here, right? Honestly, at this point of the game, I feel like I'd rather be inside of Void Spirit. He has, like, more range. It doesn't matter, though. It's whatever. Okay. Willow dies. He gets pinged to go back in, which I kind of respect. They're, like, sitting in your vision. You get a three-man silence on the Void Spirit. Okay. I mean, I was praising your execution, and then this one was, like, <laughs> Damn it! Damn it, Peter! I was praising your execution, and then what is this? You clicked Manta, BKB, and Rage at the same time. You only need one of them. Why would you click all of them? I love the fact that you have a BKB, but why did you click all of them at the same time? They, these things do the same thing. <laughs> Damn it, Peter. And you don't click open wounds. It might have saved your Void Spirit or your Pudge. It like heals even on spells. All right. That was not great. All right. And finally, the high ground attempt. This is a little risky. You should click infest at the end of it. Infest. Infest. Oh my God. That was so risky. Heal off a creep and then go high ground again. No. Okay. Waiting is fine. Oh. Uh, you don't really need to take the risk here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You're on a ward again. Oh, God. Trying to kill other Titan. Your hero man's up so well at this point in the game. Oh, nice dead shot from Marta. All right, I mean, that was fine. You executed that pretty well. Did you have BKB or was it on cooldown? I think it was on cooldown. Oh, you had BKB. No, you had BKB. Oh, you had BKB. And then what burned your mana? What did you click? Open wounds or something? Oh, if you click BKB, you would have killed them here. Damn. Right. Thank you guys so much for watching, Peter. Hopefully uh, that was very useful for you and hopefully you learned quite a bit from that gameplay. Uh, I definitely think there's a lot of good things going for you. I think your farming patterns from minute 10 to 15 were absolutely fantastic. I do think that the majority of the team fights you executed very well on and that was great. However, I think just like farming towards your team is very, very important. I think some of the early game ideas in terms of uh, where you're farming and like letting them take the tower and not over trading because life stealer is, isn't very good at that things to keep in mind but yeah over time we'll kind of work these things out hopefully get you towards that high immortal bracket and i'll see you guys in the next one and that's all but remember before you leave come on before you tune out subscribe to the game leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank if you're stuck click the link down below and i'm out peace